Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on our news. Former National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage admitted to hospital. The Chamber of Commerce CEO calls for a complete report on how millions of dollars were spent on hurricane relief. The Minister of Health says those responsible for damaging the economy must pay. Will police meet with residents here in the Rock Crusher area as an act of caution in their stance against crime? is brought to you by Alive, the nation's newest and best LTE network. Good to be alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, former National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage is gravely ill in hospital, according to the Progressive Liberal Party, which released a statement this afternoon following rampant speculation about the former MP's condition. Relatives and former colleagues of the 71-year-old gathered at Doctors Hospital, where Nottage is said to be in the intensive care unit. Kyle Joaquin tells us more. Police Commissioner Ellison Greenslade and former Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson among those seen entering Doctors Hospital early Wednesday afternoon to visit former National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage, who is said to be gravely ill. Greenslade declined an on-camera interview but told our news it was absolutely important for him to see his 71-year-old former boss. It is unclear when the former Bainstown and Grantstown MP was admitted to hospital and what he was admitted for. The Nottage family released a statement on Wednesday. It reads, We wish to advise that Dr. B.J. Nottage has been admitted to hospital. We thank you for your thoughts and prayers and appreciate your respect for the family's privacy at this time. Former Health Minister Dr. Ronald Knowles spoke briefly with reporters outside the hospital shortly after visiting his longtime friend. Very much, very close for many years, many, many years, many years, many years, from when I was a little boy. That was a long time ago. For probably, all, probably 60 of my 70 years that I've known him very well. However, he said he was disheartened by insensitive rumors. There's a rumor that he's deceased, but that's not true. That's not true. He's critically ill, but he's alive. So you've spoken to him? Mm -hmm. So you've spoken to him? No, I've visited with him. I've visited with him. And um, I guess that's all. You know, it's, it's a private personal matter, and, and, um, but I want to just assure everyone that he's, he's alive. He's, he's, he's alive. And, uh, Those rumors which were circulated on social media and radio stations prompted the Progressive Liberal Party to release this statement. Please be advised that postings currently making the rounds on social media about the passing of Dr. B.J. Nottage are untrue. Dr. Nottage is gravely ill in hospital. Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands says he finds the rumors appalling. I think we have to be very cautious to understand that even if somebody is a public figure, he or she is entitled to their own um, privacy, that uh, when ill, um, this is a difficult time for family, spouse, loved ones. I, I can only say that our heart, our support, our love um, goes out uh, to uh, the family of Dr. Nottage. Questions about the former health minister's health were raised on April 27th during his speech at a PLP rally on Armbailey Park when he became incoherent. Nottage, who lost his Bainstown and Grantstown seat in the May 10th general election, was taken to hospital shortly after his speech. It was later revealed that he was dehydrated. Now again, Dr. Nottage's family is asking for respect and privacy during what is no doubt a very, very difficult time. Reporting from Doctors Hospital for Our News, I'm Kyle Joaquin. In other news, the details of the Bahamar heads of terms between the Christie administration and the China Export-Import Bank sparked curiosity and controversy along the campaign trail, with the Free National Movement pledging to unseal the deal if it secured the government. Concessions granted under that deal remained a mystery until now, with the release of the heads of terms signed on August 22, 2016. It was with much fanfare that the Christie administration last year announced that an agreement had been made to sell and complete the Bahamar Resort, but a number of key elements remained unknown. Details on this deal, however, were scarce. Who exactly is lined up to buy the hotel? How much money it will cost to complete the hotel? What concessions government has granted? And how many employees will be rehired remain unknown. Nonetheless, Christie said his government achieved a key objective. Under the heads of terms signed today by the government and the bank, the remobilization at Bahama will commence immediately. 
The heads of agreement related to that deal were court sealed until last week, according to Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, who made the announcement as he wrapped up debate on the 2017-2018 budget last night. He says all stakeholders granted consent to having the heads of terms released. According to the heads of terms signed on August 22, 2016, key concessions include the granting of up to 1,200 work permits for China Construction America to complete the resort. In addition, 30 work permits were granted under the terms for all necessary staff of Perfect Luck Assets Limited or Asset SPV to cover those agents and staff required to supervise and carry out the project. The government and China XM Bank also agreed that Bahamian citizens owning and holding shop leases and concessions in the project would be permitted to continue to hold them on the same terms and conditions as existed under BML. Former Attorney General Alison Maynard Gibson, who was also a lead negotiator for the reconstructed deal, has disclosed that some of her family members are leaseholders at Bahamar. Also of note in the newly released heads of terms are the tax waivers and exemptions the resort has received. According to Term 9.1, during the remobilization and construction phase contained in the Hotels Encouragement Act agreement, Bahamar would receive exemptions of value-added and import taxes on goods and services for the completed work and remaining work on the entire project. Additional concessions include the waiver of stamp duty and VAT on the trans of assets from BML to the SPV while not requiring CXM claims SPV or asset SPV to pay any of BML's outstanding real property taxes or gaming taxes related to the Crystal Palace Casino. The government will retain its claims against the relevant BML companies for those sums. Annex E of the agreement notes that the concessions shall remain in full force and effect so long as the project shall continue to be used and operated as a hotel resort. And following Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis' shocking revelation about millions of dollars in hurricane cleanup contracts being awarded to a single contractor, CEO of the Chamber of Commerce and Employers Confederation, Edison Sumner, is demanding government compile and release a report detailing how every cent allocated for hurricane relief was spent. Jasmine Brown tells us more. Sumner says while the information was useful, there needs to be more than just snippets, as the Bahamian people deserve to know how that money was spent. The more reasonable approach would be to have a full comprehensive report done. The cats are the bag in some cases now. Uh, we can't put it back in the bag. And I think at this point now it's really just a matter for the government to now, you know, file reports. Prime Minister Minish revealed that the government awarded $8 million worth of cleanup contracts to companies owned by John Ash, who was operating four companies, two of which were not registered. The contracts accounted for more than 35% of the total figure expended on cleanup exercises in New Providence and nearly 30% of the $28.9 million spent on cleanup exercises across the country, according to Minnis. Minnis said in a matter of months, Ash received 46 payment transactions. While he would not comment on that particular case, Sumner says it's cause for serious concern. It's unfortunate that... Um you know, individuals are being named out and singled out in Parliament in this exercise. And I guess it's because the amounts that were paid were, were such exorbitant sums. But I think that um, if I were to advise the government on it, I would recommend that they just have a complete report prepared and have that report released. And where it is necessary to name individuals, then you can do it in a report um, and justify how those who are responsible for making the payments justify why the payments were made. The chamber CEO says he hopes the former administration kept good records so that the money can be properly traced. Sumner says that would not have been a difficult task as the chamber and Rotary Clubs of the Bahamas were able to keep impeccable records of the nearly one million dollars they raised during a nationally televised telethon they held weeks after Hurricane Matthew caused nearly half a billion dollars in damage last October. Now Sumner says the chamber does not plan on letting the matter rest here as they will be making a formal request to the Ministry of Finance for the release of a report. He says they have already made specific requests for information about businesses impacted by the storm and have yet to be helped. We do not know what the outcome is. 
Uh, we have some letters into the Ministry of Finance asking for some further clarification and also asking for a register of the businesses that were or may have been, um, who might have received some assistance from the Ministry of Finance, but we haven't received it yet. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, former Minister of Grand Bahama Michael Darville is demanding the Minister of Health table all relevant health contracts in the House of Assembly or apologize to the public for allegedly misleading Parliament. According to Sands, he went through great pains to ensure that every comment he made was fact-checked. Giorgio Bain has that story. Minister of Health Dr. Dwayne Sands compares the state of the economy to a horror story and says those responsible for bringing it to this level must pay for what they've done to the Bahamian people. Sands was responding to former Grand Bahama Minister Dr. Michael Darville, who called on a new health minister to support his claims that the Christie administration awarded $90 million in health contracts shortly before the general election or apologized for misleading Parliament and the Bahamian people. However, Sands insisted today that the former government's incompetence is evident. You know, there are many other examples of the decisions made in my ministry that, while it may not have been criminal, it certainly was incompetent, it certainly was irregular, and it begs the question, what were you thinking? According to Darvel, some of Sand's comments were absolutely untrue. He made specific reference to the health minister's claim that the former government awarded a $500,000 monthly maintenance contract for the mini hospital in Abaco while the facility was closed and a $424,000 monthly maintenance contract for the mini hospital in Exuma by way of the Department of Public Health. Sands admitted days later that the contract was actually never executed. And I speak about the contract for the cleaning of the Abaco Clinic. It turns out that that contract, though drawn up, had not been executed even though the Ministry of Health considers it, considers it an obligation to the tune of $500,000 per year. That gives us the opportunity to revisit that obligation. According to Sands, the facts still speak for themselves and he has the evidence that the contracts were awarded weeks ahead of the general election. He said he also has proof that the financial obligations and responsibilities of the public health facilities were neglected in order to facilitate million dollar contracts. Despite not paying for vaccines, medication, um, not paying bills owed on dialysis and radiation therapy, despite paying, not paying staff members for months despite paying, not paying rent for months, the government of the Bahamas opted to, to make substantial payments for contracts to the tune of millions of dollars within weeks of a general election. Those facts speak for themselves. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie O'Bain. Still to come on our news, police go door to door in the rock crusher community. We'll tell you why when our news returns.